So we're joined by Dr. Gregory Batero, the founder and director of the Catholic Psych Institute. First of all, uh, doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You have a really interesting background. You did a little bit at BC, then you went to Franciscan. You spent time discerning a religious vocation with a community of the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal in the Bronx. Uh, and now you're a psychologist. So tell me, why did you think it was so important to, um, to pursue this mission of, of trying to help therapists be able to incorporate the uh, foundations of the Catholic faith into their work? That's a great question. And, um, it really comes down to my own journey of faith as I came to understand how God created me and who God created me to be. And so my own faith discovery started off at Boston College and <clears throat> led through Franciscan. And it was really understanding and unpacking the work of John Paul II. Um, as I got into a book that he wrote called Love and Responsibility to understand what it is to be, the hu to be a human person in relationship. And I read that even as a freshman in college, sort of as a manual of psychology. And I, I saw in it that it, there was this manual almost of describing what the ideal human person really looks like, obviously in the, in the life of Jesus Christ, but what that means for our own humanity. And as I progressed in my studies, I started to understand that for psychology, there are a lot of theories out there about how the human person has kind of missed the mark or gone off track or what disease really looks like. But without a model of what human health looks like, it really doesn't make sense to have an idea of what disease is. And only through the Catholic faith is there a really coherent, consistent model of what the, the healthy human looks like. And so that became the, really the backbone of, of ultimately entering into psychology for me. And I would think anybody who's struggling with something, whether it's uh, you know, alcoholism or some other uh, problem that they have, I mean, knowing that you have Jesus as your back. You know, you know, you might still need to work through things, but having Christ um, as your focus, I think, is, has got to be encouraging for folks as well. But today's topic, we are talking about fostering the gifts of our children. And, uh, you know, parents, we, we often need advice, and why not have a psychologist on to help us with that? How do you do that without, how do you foster their gifts without pushing them too hard? Well, I think first and foremost, we have to understand what the role is of the family. And, and again, through the teachings of the church and, and kind of using the Holy Family as a model, we can come to understand that the, the primary vocation that parents have towards their children, um, once they have procreated children, the second part of that is education. And so it's vitally important that parents understand how to educate, not just as a practical matter, but even as a spiritual matter, because it is precisely a part of a parent's vocation. And so what a parent needs to learn is how do you properly educate the child? And in order to understand that, we have to know what is the child supposed to be learning? And the education of the child needs to be based in love because ultimately a person learns about his or her identity and who they are as created by God, the family interacts with him or her. And so the the, the thing to education is to educate the child in their identity, who they are. They're created to be loved. And if that's the foundation, sort of the starting point for all the practical questions that come up of how do I nurture this gift, how do I teach a kid, this or that, it always has to come back to that principle. Right, and I think it's, it's hard to remember that principle if you're standing on the side of a soccer field or if you're saying you've got to practice piano, something like that. I think we lose focus. Ultimately, yes, we should want our children to know and love Christ, to understand the Catholic faith, uh, and to cling to that and have that be their goal. But it's so tempting in this world where, you know, you feel like you're always competing with other people. And I know that's a no-no when, when it comes to your children, but that tends to be a big temptation uh, for parents, you know, to, to make them, your kids be as competitive or as good or have that edge over uh, another child. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it, it actually is, is much more practical and easy than it seems. It's not, it doesn't even have to be spiritual because what happens is we naturally have this ability right away from the beginning and then we lose it over time. But think about how you respond to the ch child in the womb. You're overcome with love. I mean, a healthy, a relatively healthy person, you know, without any sort of other mitigating circumstances to add the really intense pressures that some people unfortunately feel. But typically, there's a disposition you know, of real love for the being of the child in the womb, even in the womb. There's something very precious that 
it's good that this child exists. And when a baby is first born, it is good that the child exists. And the disposition of parents towards the child is natural. And even in the light of great hardships that the child causes for a parent, even though the child is keeping the parents up all night and, and causing great discomfort and you know all the different things that parents have to sacrifice, the natural inclination and disposition towards the child is to treat that child with that kind of love that, that teaches the baby, it's good that you exist before you actually do anything. The problem is that the baby doesn't stay a baby and, the, and, and eventually becomes a toddler and a child. And, and then what happens is parents' own ideas start to get in the way. Right. That's, and, you're and right. And those ideas of what a person, is, what a child should be like. And that's when unresolved issues from the parents' own childhood or maybe certain scripts that the parents have picked up in life become more important than that first disposition that they had naturally, which is that it's good that you exist. And so it's great to, to, to nurture strengths and, you know, to encourage your kid to, to, um, to play sports and to be competitive and to develop skills. But if it's ever done in such a way that it loses sight of that basic principle, then, then you get into that sort of dangerous territory of teaching your child something other than it's good simply that you exist. Right. You know, then then, if, then you train your child to think like, oh, I have to score the next goal to be good, or I have to bring home the best grades to be good. And then the child's goodness, it's possible that you're actually teaching your child that the goodness is based on something other than their basic existence. Right, and I think that goes uh, for all of us, you know, even as adults, that we always have to keep our, our focus on the cross and on, on Christ and all these other things. You know, maybe the world thinks they're important, but they're certainly not in the big scheme of things. Dr. Gregory Botero, thank you so much for joining us. It was nice to have that little uh, word, those words of encouragement for parenting as well. Thank you for joining us. All right. Thank you.